Support for 100 Watts and a Wire is brought to you by 100wattsandawire.com. To subscribe to the show, simply click the RSS feed or subscribe wherever you get your podcast. When you visit, apply for your free 100 Watts ID and learn how you can become a sustaining member. Click the Donate page and pick the option that works best for you. We've got a traveling toolkit, 100 Watts and a Wire gear, and activity days with prizes. That's 100wattsandawire.com. And ICOM. Get out and get active with ICOM's new IC705 and its optional multifunction backpack. And BioNO Power, offering the best performance lithium iron phosphate batteries for your ham radios. Visit BioNOPower.com. That's B I O E N N O P O W E R.com or contact dealers nationwide. And now, from Grid Square Echo Mike 48, this is 100 Watts and a Wire. Well, hello, brothers and sisters, making a walk out to the old wooden shed. We're in the month of June 2020, in the middle of a pandemic, but still managing to get on with our lives. They'll look back in history and try to figure out how we all got through this and what we did and what we were doing. So I anticipate getting a lot of questions as we all age, hopefully from the next generation, curious about how we got on. You know, like the 1918, the flu, when that started uh, making its way. So I'm just out here walking and we'll go past the antenna garden here. I have to say, I had a, uh, you remember the Aunt Anna? Yeah, the, the one that the ants took over? Sons of bitches, I'm still not over that. Well, I mean, I guess I am over it. We've uh, actually physically moved on. I, I quickly threw together a dipole and replaced the double bazooka that had been infested with ants. I believe they just died. And, uh, you know, shorted out the connections or whatever on the inside. It's not like you can crack open uh, once the double bazooka is made. At least, uh, in my estimation, you can't just go and crack it open and take a look inside. You know, these things are sealed up. Unfortunately, it was not sealed up uh, well enough. And the ants were using my lines and the centerpiece of the double bazooka as a, you know, pass through. They were moving from tree to tree along the uh, the 20 meter. I, I can't bring myself to look. I have a double bazooka, same maker. It's a radio waves. I can't, I can't bring myself to look at it, bring it down, and just see if they got into that one too. I just, yeah, it's still working. So I'm not going to... Uh, mess with success in this fashion but the 20 meter antenna a couple weeks ago we just noticed that the uh, SWR you know it was like a 2.3 and I thought that's really weird you know what I mean because it's a dipole and it was cut for the actual place I intended it to be and you know you just don't normally see that going across the double bazooka I have seen double bazookas go from like one to six end to end you know, in different bands, and it's kind of consistent that way, but never, you know, over 2.1. So I've got another one up there for 40, and I'm just holding, hoping that it holds on. We'll see. So because I'm not skilled enough, and I haven't even tried, really, to be honest with you, is I haven't tried to make a uh, double bazooka. Um... I have experience handling them, and I've ruined a couple of them for sure. Don't you like when the tree branches fall right out of the tree and go directly into the ground like a piercing sword? Good grief. It's like, you know, you just missed death. But I, I enjoy the walk and talks and getting out here. We'll get to the old shed here in a little bit. I'm going to pull this right out of the ground. Yeah, jeez, three inches. Good grief. Anywho, what I managed to do was I ended up buying one. And I know the purists are like, You should have done this, you dumb son of a bitch. Yeah, whatever. <clears throat> Two words for you. 
Mind your goddamn business. Anyway, look, I, uh, I, uh, I took a chance on an Altimax. Altimax. Have you seen this company? Altimax antennas. Not a sponsor. And I paid the money and the shipping to try a 20 meter double bazooka. And we put it up there, coming up the hill. And uh, it's playing uh, quite well at this point. Um, it's about 50 feet up there, and it's more in line with what a 20-meter antenna should be putting out. It's been quiet. And um, there has been some activity on 20 meters, but, you know, I'm not hearing the strongest signals generally. So, uh, be that as it may, it's up there. It's a brand new antenna. I do love the double bazookas. Maybe one day I'll make one. Or be with someone who can uh, help me make one. And I'm, I'm willing to try. It's just uh, between time and everything else. Is, this was the way to go. So I replaced the dipole. Waka waka. You can look this company up online. It's a nice make. I have to say it's smaller. It's got a smaller centerpiece. And uh, I did, though, I did uh, fill these holes with a little bit of, uh, you know, just to keep the, I don't even know what you call it right now, but something to, uh, to fill the space so the ants didn't crawl back in here. Because they seem to be hanging out, man, in this area. They're going from tree to tree doing what they're doing. And I wanted to close the door, make them retreat, turn around, and go, damn, that, that, that's locked. Got to go over it. And not through it. I don't care if they go through it, on it, whatever. Boy, it's really plush back here. Things are really grown up. Luckily, I don't have enough trees uh, pushing up. I'd have to come out here and do some tree work. But I've got some antennas. The 160 antenna, we haven't had any issues with as soon as I say that now. But we've been fortunate through the winter with 160 and 80 out here in the woods. And I've got some new growth out here that's almost as tall as me. So your boy will have to come out here with some kind of weed eater or some kind of deal. Uh, I'll start to head back to the old wooden shed. So when I talk about running field day and running our activities, our operating events from the old wooden shed, I mean it. It's out here on the edge of the woods. And um, last weekend, whenever you're hearing this, uh, the 12th through the 14th, we were doing... The 100 watts in a wire tune-up, and I get to announce our winner. And I want to congratulate Tom. His call sign is Kilo Charlie 3 Tango Oscar Mike. Uh, he has won the random drawing for prizes. Great stuff there. Powerful solar. Uh, he's going to get a solar panel, a bio-NO battery. Some prizes from MFJ. Alpha Antenna, Team Martian. He was in Pennsylvania with Team Martian. So congratulations to Tom. Thank you to all who uh, participated. I heard several stations on the air. Got to, to work a bunch of you uh, from the old wooden shed. We're coming up on it now. So once we get in there, we can start to talk about plans for next weekend, which is field day. Maybe we could talk about some of the lessons we've learned uh, through the tune-up. Because there was, there was a lot of things that would happen. You know, p players on our team got uh, shut out. Uh, Steve, W7UDI, I haven't got the full story from him, but, but uh, he got to work a little bit. But the winds where he was uh, were so bad it kept him uh, off the air a lot. He had a high noise floor as well with some of the... Um, I guess the uh, power going into his garage. So look, man, you just get on and do what you can do when you can do it. And if you can operate, good on you. So uh, many folks got into the random drawing and here we are at the door. At the door, we'll go in and open it up. All right, we'll take a break here. When we come back, we will uh, discuss a little bit more about things we may have learned during the tune-up last week and how we get prepared for next weekend's field day, you're listening to 100 Watts and a Wire. One thing, it's important that the man at the controls is also the man on the radio. 
in a land where we're all 20 over. This is 100 watts and a wire. The ICOM 705 is your perfect QRP companion as you have base station features and functionality at the tip of your fingers. But it's in a portable package covering HF 6 meters, 2 meters, and 70 centimeters. This compact rig weighs in at 1 kilo or just over 2 pounds. With RF direct sampling for most of the HF band and IF sampling for frequencies above 25 megahertz. It's got that large 4.3 inch color touch screen with live band scope and waterfall. And the perfect accessory for the IC705 is the optional backpack. It's the LC192. It has a special compartment for the IC705 and room for accessories for soda activations or just a day in the park. Visit icomamerica.com slash amateur for more information on all ICOM radios. 100 watts and a wire. Activity days. Okay, welcome back. Here we are. We're out here. I'm going to open things up and uh, move some things around. I'm still in that kind of cleaning it up mode, and it's one of those... Maybe I should just... Oh, these old windows. It's where the window sashes come from that I use on the ends of my antenna. These old kind of windows from the old days. Oh, I open it up and get some air going through here. And, uh, you know, I do keep some things in here, but just general stuff. A little bit of coax and, um, you know, that kind of thing. It's, a, it's some old tools I keep around. And uh, open up the windows, get some air in here, and I come through and we'll clean it up and get it ready for the tune-up. And then, you know, you've got a week in between, and then it's field day. So this is that week in between so I'm going to charge up my battery. Um, I didn't hook up any solar. Did you guys hook up solar? This year, I don't know what it was. I think I was uh, working with the kiddie pool and trying to get things squared away with that. That I didn't, I didn't end up putting up a, uh, a solar panel to recharge. So I need to do that. Because I was on the air uh, Thursday night. And, uh, you know, I'd run for a half an hour, take a break all these sorts of things. And, and uh, to talk about some of the lessons, what did we learn? You know, I've got, a, I've got that person now, I'm very decisive. I know what I want to do. And then it comes to like, you know, the base station. I took the base station, I knew what antennas I wanted to put up. And I did it, you know, and it took, so, it took a while, a lot of clearing in the woods, just to get things the way you want it. I've tried all sorts of different combinations. And then when it comes to the portable, this is the time where I second guess myself just a little bit. And let me tell you where. It's because of the mast. Now, in years past, I always thought higher, higher, need it, you know, call MFJ. I, I need a mast that will kiss the clouds, that will just get below the sun where it doesn't melt. You know, and I would think, got to get up super high because that's what I was thinking with the base station. And then I'll go out here for several months, as soon as the weather would break, and I find my pocket portable. My pocket portable, if I'm using a mast, is 25 feet, period. I'm comfortable with that. I can push it up, you know, with anything. No problem. You know, even if I have an antenna that's a little heavier, say I put a ballon on a dipole or a ballon on an off-center fed that I'm tinkering with, 25 feet, no problem. Put it up there. Cool. Comes to like the old wooden shed. I've got two masts. I can go up two, I can go up 35 feet or 32 feet rather. Or I can go up, you know, 25 feet on the other one. So I spend a lot of time thinking, well, which one would I put up? Like, what should I do? What combination of antennas? And I'm thinking, ah, dude, it's like that moment where you can step back of yourself and go, what are you doing, man? You've been practicing at 25 foot for Aries, NVIS from 80, 40, and 20. You've built linked dipoles that are tuned for 25 feet. But all of a sudden, I see the mass that can get me up 32. And I, I start, like, second guessing. Wait, wait, wait. Yep, we'll put the uh, 40 on the 32 footer 
And then we'll put the uh, 25 footer up here in this second spot. So we'll run two. This is what I'm thinking. We'll do 32 and 25. And then I'm like, can I get a little bit more out of that 25? Yeah, I can get that actually up to 30. Man, I put that first 32 up there. And I'm looking at it. And I'm like, dummy, this is the reason why you've gone to 25 feet. This is the reason right here. You get frustrated. You've got ropes swinging all over the place. Your coax is doing something wacky. And the tip of this thing looks like you got a marlin hooked on that sama mama. You don't have a, and there's nothing on it. There's, I mean, there's no, you know, very lightweight. And then ultimately I get to the point where I'm, I'm a, I say, what are you doing? You've been practicing at 25 feet. Put the 25 footer in there. But this mask, what, smack right across your face, smack myself right in the face. Still have a mark. You can make both of these masks. I have three masks. One that is portable and stays portable in my vehicle, period, right? It's got a, a different base. It doesn't fit the, the situation I have out at the old wooden shed, which is a smaller um, base. So I'm like... Dummy, get the 25 feet out of the 32 footer and the other one and make them 25 feet, put 25 feet up. And in every, everyday life, I don't struggle with these kind of decisions. But when it comes to antennas and setting them up and how high to put them, and I got to thank Ed. Oh, Ed, I'm spacing on your call. DD5 something, you know, something. Ed Durant. You know him from Amateur Radio Newsline, and he's he's uh, contributed here. He'll hear this eventually and be like, dude, why didn't you write my call sign down? We'll blame this one on the uh, dyslexia, Ed. I'm writing back and forth, and what a timely spot for him to contact me. And we start talking about antenna height. You know, he does a lot of soda stuff, and I got to thank him. I'm glad I remembered this because... He got it in, it got it through to me that like, you know, 25 feet, 25 feet is good. 25 feet is fine. You know, there's not going to be so much difference between what you're talking about doing and setting up between 25 and 32 feet that you need to be putting yourself through all this sort of, I wouldn't call it stress, but it definitely does burn a lot of time in your setup. So... Thanks to Ed Durant. Uh, we just settled into what we were doing anyway. We were just settling into 25 feet. Thank you, Ed, for just... You know, it's like you got a beautiful girl, and then you say, oh, I got it. I just... There's the prom queen. Yeah, I, think, I think there might be greener grass. No! No, man! So uh, I was a little miffed at myself for even suggesting to go away from your original plan. I think it's natural, but man, I was just tempted by a few extra feet and it's ridiculous. The prom queen reference really didn't fit. I guess you could say that this girl was a little taller than the, the 25 foot girl. See, it doesn't matter. It, does, it doesn't even make sense. It doesn't connect. It makes my mind weird. So I now have the mass set up for 25 feet regardless. The one thing that I noticed about setting up in the old wooden shed and setting up portable in general is I don't go west of me. And it doesn't seem to matter which way I've got my ends allocated broadside east to west is generally generally what i go for i'm out here in the heartland so i'll set up that way but i very rarely i'll make contacts to my north um we'll go we'll go to michigan we'll do south and uh you know south east from you know all states that are surrounding we'll do illinois we'll do oklahoma we'll do kansas uh, slightly west of Kansas, but you know, 
generally speaking, I'm hitting the East Coast and I'll hit New Jersey and Pennsylvania, all fine, Virginia, Maryland. But when it comes to getting further out West, it really doesn't happen for me out here. But then, one contact all the way to California had to ask the brother, are you sure you're not just doing some remote thing here? Like, did this antenna really make it out to the West Coast? Yep, you're five five coming into California. And I was like, well, there you are. I thought everyone was asleep or just could not, you know, one of those things. This time, propagation always seemed to go east. All right, we'll take a break and we'll come back and talk just a little bit about how we're going to run on field day. I hope you learned some things for, for the tune-up, and that's what it's all about. But your roles may change uh, as you head into field day. We'll talk about all this and more next. We do blues, rhythm and blues, jazz, funk, soul. We can handle rock, pop, country, heavy metal, fusion, hip-hop, rap, Motown operetta, show tunes. In fact, we've even been called upon on occasion to do a polka. When in doubt, hang them high. This is 100 watts and a wire. If you're an electronics kit builder, you'll find something interesting in the assortment of gadgets available at hamgadgets.com. Ham Gadgets has been around for nearly 20 years, bringing you some of the most popular kits ever. You've seen these projects all over the place. They've even been featured in the American Radio Relay League's Handbook for Radio Communications. Their Morse code keyers are being used every day by thousands of hams around the world. The $35 Pico Keyer has everything you need to build a Morse code keyer, including the enclosure. They also have a full line of universal keying adapter kits for transmitters and amplifiers. Order online at their secure website today and get one week delivery for U.S. orders. They are on the World Wide Web at hamgadgets. Dot com. That's ham, H-A-M, gadgets, dot com. You're listening to 100 Watts and a Wire. One other thing I did for the tune-up is I set up a tent. It's a big tent I got from Paul, again with a call sign. I'm out here. I feel kind of naked. But, uh, you know, Paul had bought himself one of those pull-behind RVs, and uh, over the winter we started talking about kids and camping and my interest in it and uh, he sent this tent to me and uh, it's great man it's just great because it's big Uh, my kids love it you know it's like a wilderness lodge and I set that up and I'm thinking cool man that that was really cool we found enough shade the kids loved it they're in and out of there thanks for the sand you got some sand from the east coast in there the girls were loving that too they're like there's sand in here i'm like well mr paul probably took this to the beach with his his wife so we had some sand in there we'll have to talk about that story uh but it was really nice being from the east coast and not being able to get out uh to beaches right now because of the covid 19 um, my kids are like thinking of their grandmother and the beaches and getting out. So anyway, we set this camp, uh, this tent up, you know, we've got the old wooden shed. We're camping out. We're hanging out. I've got a lantern going, which is actually like a flashlight lantern type of deal. All new. And everything is trying to be exercised for field day. And I'm curious to see what your lessons were. You know, you go year to year. And I look at field day as being one of those things that we always do with the club. And it's sort of, you know, you've got your assigned positions. Well, this year's going to be different. I imagine some small groups will get together. I'll miss the uh, opportunity to barbecue with a couple of folks or to get yourself a uh, pizza pie. You know, have a beer with a buddy. That's going to be different in 2020. But I think what I'm going to do with my setup, as it related to the tune-up, it's going to be just me again. It'll be me, and um, we'll try something different. The location may change. I may get out of the shed and try to go out into a field. I'm concerned about the sun, though. And, uh, you know, I would take my vehicle out there and set up the mast I'll set up a tent, and I'm worried about so much exposure or limited 
shade out there. So now I've got some decisions to make this week. You know, stay in a comfortable shed, which is uh, surrounded by trees. You know, it may affect my signal, and, and particularly it may affect it to the west. Who knows? I don't know. I seem to have that problem getting out west of me out there even in the field. It's the sun um, that I'm thinking about. A lot of the field days that I've seen have some sort of cover. Um, the back of my truck would not provide it. The tent's going to be okay, but the tent will heat up. So, you know, that's where we are. This is first world problems, you know, first world problems. It's not even a, a really a situation. The fact that we're all healthy enough uh, to get out and even set up during field day and make contacts or even run inside, you know, is a blessing. So uh, we'll just keep it that way. But that's what I'm thinking about is now positioned. My, in terms of antennas, I built myself an off-center fed dipole. And Michael, who was uh, on the team, uh, he was on Queen, uh, what was it, a uh, team quarantine, uh, the K0STH team for the tune-up, and he's got a YouTube channel. And he, he just built this off-center fed, and I thought, I've had mixed results with off-center feds, but they do have their value uh, in a portable situation, say with regard to space, maybe you can't put up two antennas. Who puts up two antennas when they're portable, right? You put up something that may get you multi-banded. It could be an off-center fed. You know, it could be some sort of G5 RV, wh whatever, whatever you can throw up there. It could be an N-fed. Lots of people do different things. Link dipoles. That seems to be uh, what I'm going to do and uh, because it's field day and it's a little different, my field day operation technique will be probably put up. I say probably because, you know, we'll see on game day what we decide to do. I think I'm going to use the link dipoles for 20, 40, and 80. And even if I just get one of them up, wherever I decide to go, um... You'll find activity on field day on 80. For the tune-up, you know, it's not like it's this worldwide event that everybody in the nation is participating in. So you kind of think in terms of, well, what bands would work? And for me, 20 and 40 seemed to be the money spot. It wasn't like I was going to set up on 80 and make a ton of uh, tune-up contacts. Because frankly, you know, not everybody's participating. It's not promoted throughout the uh, amateur radio I mean, Amateur Radio Newsline always gives us a bump, and I appreciate that. Neil Rapp always gives us a bump. Um, Michael and his call sign is what his channel is on uh, YouTube. They give us a bump, but nobody else is talking about it. It's not like, you know, it's being promoted so much like Field Day. You know, I ain't mad at you. Do your thing. That's fine. But the, the point is 80 meters for me was sort of like you probably don't really need it. You know, are you going to be out there really late? Are you going to be out really early? Eh, 2040. Now, with field day, it's business on all bands for 24 hours. So I'm thinking about, you know, I'll put that link dipole up, you know, have the 80 on there as well, and, you know, we'll have it as an option. Because the way I operate is I'll start on a band and I will just turn the dial. And what I do is I make a different game out of this for myself. If you've been with me on the show for a while, you understand what the game is. I try to work different states. So if I've worked at different states, it doesn't matter if I've worked your station. You know, I'll work you one time. Got you, Kansas. Thank you. Next, Tennessee. Next, Maryland. And I try to just work different states. And I'll just spin. And then I may jump a band. Go to 40. Go back the other way. Now, with a link dipole, you've got to disconnect or reconnect for the bands that you're trying to use. So that's a little different. So maybe I'll spend a little more time than just going back and forth and back. With an off-center fed for, say, 20 and 40, uh, the one he made on his channel this week was a 20, 40, and an 80. I made it, but out here, I don't have that space. I could wrap it around a tree. I could bend it. It would probably be very forgiving. But 
eh, it's more of a meow, no. But uh, for field day, it's tempting because 80 meters actually is a player. You know, you may need a tuner for this soft center fit on 80. Um, but, you know, check out the video on your own. See if that's something you're interested in. But I did, on his prompt, think, oh, yeah, an off-center fed. Huh. Right. And I made it for 80, and I cut it back down to 40 because it just didn't have the space. Well, I'll probably put that up because it's good to have in the arsenal for space. You know, if you go out to a uh, park. You know, city, your local, state park, national park, and you just don't have that space. Or you've got space to one direction, maybe having that 40-meter end, long end, you know, put it right there. Put the short end here because you don't have it. It's a good antenna to have in the, in the box. I get it. I'm more of a dipole guy. Uh, the link dipoles are sort of how I'm doing my portable stuff at 25 feet. No matter what I do this uh, coming field day. It'll be at 25 feet. Oh, Lord. I got some cleanup to do in the shed. I uh, wish you guys all the best. I hope you're holding up okay during this time. It's interesting. It's such an interesting thing. It's a time where we will uh, politicize a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Um, and I hear people on the air... You know, they're staying safe. They're the older folks. You'll hear them wear the mask, stay inside, trying to get over. Then you hear a completely different side. And if you wear a mask, you're this. If you don't wear it, you're that. Like, just stay healthy. Do whatever you want to each their own, like we think in this hobby. But, you know, think about some other people, too. If you're not going to think about yourself or you're just putting everything else above whatever, you know, just take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Stay safe during field day. Be careful and try to have fun. And I will catch you soon. If you can, friends, please try and stay above the noise. To join the 100 Watts in a Wire community, visit 100wattsinawire.com.